Education Secretary Arne Duncan on its board. Dreambox Learning is a program used by about one out of every 10 public schools here in the U.S. currently, as both teachers and students begin transitioning to a remote learning environment. Dreambox Learning CEO Jesse Willie Wilson joins us now. Jesse, thanks so much for talking to us today. First, I'm hoping you can describe to us what is the adaptive learning that Dreambox does and what is your goal in partnering with schools and teachers? Well, we have a goal to unlock learning potential in every child, regardless of what zip code they're in. And we think the way to do that is to personalize the learning experience so that it's engaging, it's effective, and it's highly, highly personalized. We developed an intelligent adaptive learning engine, which was pioneered in 2006, to actually track how kids are thinking so that we could match the curriculum to exactly where they were so it, was, it would never be too difficult or too easy. And it would always be engaging and kids would struggle productively and learn and master skills. So, Jesse, you were already working with a range of, of schools pre-COVID, but then in the first half of this year, I understand you've had more than 50 percent revenue growth. How much has your business changed now that a lot of teaching is happen, happening remotely? And how has your service changed as you prepare to get teachers and schools ready for the back-to-school season? You know, we really didn't know what to expect. We just knew we had to embrace change. Schools were asked to change, and parents were asked to change, and we changed, too. So we up opened up our platform for free through the end of the school year just to make sure that parents and teachers didn't have to worry about mathematics. And we saw two, over 2 million kids join the platform in less than six weeks. And so that's great growth, but it also means it strained the organization. And when you grow that fast, I like to say you get stretch marks. <laughs> so we're managing through our stretch marks. That means that we have a lot more students and a lot more volume to manage in a much in a much sm smaller piece of time. And um, we thought we would get some relief as schools would go back to school in live classrooms. And what we're finding now in the last couple of weeks is that there's an acceleration in the, the number of schools and districts that have decided to remain in, an, in a distance 100% online loan. Uh, online learning mode. Yeah. Je Jesse, talk to us for a moment about big picture. What are the gaps that you see in the technology-driven distance learning process so far? Because uh, fr from so much of what I see, it's widening gaps between the haves and have-nots when the narrative was this was supposed to help the process. What's, what's missing? What's, what are the missing ingredients th that could help rectify things like that? So this is a big concern and challenge, and I would say an opportunity for everyone involved in blended learning. At Dreambox, we never believed and don't believe that teachers can be replaced by technology. We have developed a technology that was designed to complement the live instruction, to complement the art and the magic that happens in a live classroom. So we think that there are things that technology can do better. Technology can understand what each individual child is doing moment by moment and then can tee up uh, predictive insights to a teacher so that they know what they can do and how they can change their live instruction. So you're right, over the time of COVID, we think that the gap between the haves and the have nots has grown larger because there are some kids that are permanently disconnected. They don't have access to broadband and they don't have devices. And we need coordinated strategy, national, state and local strategy to make sure that these disconnected kids are connected and they can leverage innovative learning technologies that complement what they get in the classroom. Yeah, Jesse, technology also doesn't provide discipline, structure, emotional support, encouragement. I'm wondering if you have any ideas or have seen any models for how, even when kids aren't in a classroom in a school, some of those types of ingredients might be provided when maybe the parent or grandparent in the home isn't able to have their eye on, on that child uh, during every minute of the school day. Yes, well, one of the things, one of the adaptations that we actually made during the time of COVID was we added a capability in the platform that will allow teachers to send notes to kids. So I don't think that all technologies are the same. There's no monolithic online learning experience. And you're right that many kids are not experiencing a positive online learning experience. We're thrilled that at Dreambox, 
our kids are engaged. They like, they think they're playing a game, but they're actually engaged in rigorous, meaningful, deep thinking mathematics. So that's why they love it. And that's why parents trust it. We saw an ex exponential growth in the number of parents who actually signed up for Dreambox as well. Parents need relief. Children need engaged, learning, reliable experiences, learning experiences. And I think it's incumbent upon companies like Dreambox to open themselves up to the scrutiny of third-party evaluators. As we did, a Harvard study that we published proved that it was efficacious and that if kids use Dreambox for just five lessons a week, that's less than one hour, they could get a 60% increase in their learning. And on the other side, in terms of student privacy, Common Sense Media has given us their highest rating. So these are hard goals, but we've got to be intentional about subjecting ourselves to the scrutiny of third party providers to make sure that kids and teachers don't think they're martyring their kids just by adding technology to their learning experience.